my channel, it's Love Always Endures. So today's video is gonna be about my thoughts on hair color. I know that it's so beautiful. Hair is an accessory, right? And you can kind of do whatever you want with it. You can, you can cut it, you can let it grow, you can color it, you can do whatever. And there's so many options. And I think sometimes um, hair coloring comes with such a bad rep that people who otherwise would express their creativity through their hair feel as though they can't for fear of damaging their hair. So here are a couple things I feel that you should know ahead of time before you get your hair colored. Number one, bleach is not required. I have black hair. It's actually not jet black, it's dark brown. But my hair is dark and I can go from dark brown, from this, to blonde without bleach. Some people are like, that's impossible, I don't believe it. Trust me, if you have somebody who knows what they're doing, an actual colorist, right, then it's possible. Bleach is damaging, if you didn't know. Bleach is literally damaging, it's so drying. Have you ever seen somebody get their hair dyed and no matter what color they get it dyed, whether they got it dyed red, whether they got it dyed blonde, it always turns into that burnt, toasty orange color. A lot of times that is the problem with bleach. Bleach is just gonna make your hair a blank canvas, the color's gonna stain it, but it's always gonna fade back to that same color. So if you actually get your hair dyed opposed to bleach, you'll actually retain the color a lot better. Two, hair color can and often does affect your hair texture. Now, depending on how much color you have, how often you color your hair, what color you chose to get, all those things do impact and affect how your hair texture changes. My hair texture gets a little bit of loose. My hair texture gets a little bit looser when I do have it dyed blonde, but it is not heat damage status. I still have actual curls, even though my hair is blonde. And that just has to do with, again, making sure your hair is dyed properly and that um, it's not bleached, okay? Three, moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. I cannot tell you enough. Natural hair already suffers from dryness. Sebum, I'm gonna give y'all a quick lesson, real, real quick, okay? So fact of the day, sebum is your natural hair oils that come from your scalp that run down the strand to moisturize your hair. So people who have straighter hair, which by the way is based on the follicle shape, so perfect circle follicles are perfectly straight hair. As the follicles become more oval, the hair becomes more curly. So people with tightly, tightly coiled hair have very oval follicles. So if your follicle is round and your hair is straight, the sebum from your scalp drops to the end of the hair very quickly due to gravity. It, there's nothing interfering with it. It goes down the strand just like that. So for people who have curly hair, the sebum has to fight gravity. It has to go around and around and around, and oftentimes it has to go up, right? I mean, you got an afro, the, the, the sebum has to go up against gravity. So that's why you'll find people who have straighter hair tend to feel the need to wash their hair more often because their hair gets oilier quickly. But you'll notice when you get your hair flat ironed, your hair will get oily. But when it's in its natural state, it doesn't really get oily like that, okay? And that also has to do with porosity, high porosity, low porosity. That's for another video. People who have afro textured hair generally struggle with dryness. Any type of chemical added to your hair adds to the dryness. So if you flat iron your hair, you're running the potential of drying your hair out. If you color your hair, you run the potential of drying your hair out. If you do a lot of swimming in chlorine water, you run the potential of drying your hair out. So you just have to know ahead of time that you can't have all these things stacked up against each other. It's not the best idea to keep your hair bleached, habitually flat ironed, and then go swimming all the time. It's just not a good idea. That's too many chemicals in the mix, okay? And even if you're natural and you don't have to deal with the chemical of a relaxer, there's still things that can impact the health of your strands. <laughs> Ooh, I'm preaching. Okay, so anyway, let's digress. You want to make sure your hair is even more moisturized once you have color than it was before you had color. You already struggled with dryness. Dryness is always a thing. Making sure your hair had the right amount of liquid oil cream in it is already a concern. It's even more so the case when you have color in your hair. If your hair is not in a healthy state, I repeat, if your hair is not in a healthy state, if you have damage, if you have breakage, if your hair is dry, if your scalp is flaking, whatever it is, if your hair is not in a healthy state, I don't recommend you getting color put in it. You need to figure out where your hair needs to be before you, you take that step. And I'm not trying to mess with your zhuzh, I'm not trying to stomp on your parade, like 
this is just the honest truth of the matter. A lot of times the problem is people will already have very dry, damaged hair, go get it colored, and then it's even worse. So if you're that low maintenance girl who really doesn't like to do her hair like that, it might not be a good idea for you to get your hair colored. If you enjoy color, maybe you should do it through braids or through weaves or through extensions, but not necessarily through actually dyeing your hair because of the risk. Four, make sure you get a stylist that you trust, someone who's a colorist, someone who knows what they're doing. I have linked my stylist down below. She's amazing, like I mean amazing, like you can send her a picture and she'll give you exactly what you're looking for. Like. She knows what she's doing. She's not gonna use bleach on your hair. She has told me when she felt like my hair is not in a position to get color. Like, I wanted my hair colored right after my cut. And she was like, honestly, if I were you, I would wait. I think it's a good idea for you to wait. It's the safest thing for your hair. It's the healthiest thing for your hair. Your hair has been through a lot over the past couple of months. Give it a chance to get its bearing straight, and then come back and see me in six months for some color. And that's what I'm gonna do. <laughs> some things that I've noticed about my hair when I have it colored, I feel like I don't really retain as much length as I could. It grows, don't get me wrong, and I'll post a picture but I feel like I could have more growth if my hair were not colored, um, which I am okay with, because y'all know I'm not a big length person. I just like healthy hair, that's just the goal. Um, you do have to be more vigilant with your trims when you have color in your hair, just because um, of dryness, right? So if you're a person who misses out on your trims and you get a trim once or twice a year, you might need to rethink that strategy before you get your hair colored. Um, also too, my blonde hair is tangled quicklier. Why do I always do that? More quickly. My blonde hair is tangled more quickly than my black hairs and my brown hairs. So when you go to the swimming pool and you're trying to be cute and you have a huge afro and you jump in and you swim in like you're Ariel and you just don't care about life, when it's time to detangle, you'll be sorry. <laughs> I know I was a few times. Like I'm like, why haven't I learned? Why haven't I figured this out yet? Yeah, no, you cannot do that. Like, especially with the color in my hair, the blonde hairs are really what tangle. Just keeping that in mind, knowing what works for you, knowing yourself, like you can be honest with yourself, right? And say, you know what, I just graduated from school and I just started a new job and I'm just trying to get my life together. Let me wait until I'm established with that and I can dedicate more time to my hair before I start getting my hair colored. Or you can say, you know what, I have a regular hair regimen. You know, my hair stays moisturized. My hair is not breaking off. I can handle some color right now. Let me try something, you know what I mean? So I would say don't be afraid. Just do your research and make sure you keep your hair moisturized. That's honestly the best thing you can do. Moistures. Just be mindful of that. And then the everyday things you can do to help your hair keep moisture. Satin pillowcase. Making sure you put on a satin bonnet underneath your beanie. Ladies, in the wintertime, nobody sees what's underneath your beanie, especially if you already have a bad hair day. Put a bonnet on underneath your beanie. You know, so make your cute little braid, right? Make your cute braid. Put a beanie bonnet on the back half of it. Put your beanie on and put bobby pins in it so that it can't go anywhere. Your hair will thank you because that that yarn from that bonnet dries and scratches. You okay? You okay, Pooh? What's going on? <laughs> Sorry, she, she had a moment. You about to go spend some time on the beach, especially if you have some hair color. Put some shea butter in your hair. Did you know shea butter is a natural SPF? Put it on your skin and put it in your hair and then go swimming. You know what I mean? So just be mindful of that. I just don't want you all to be afraid of color because it's so beautiful and color can do so much. And especially if you have short hair and you're keeping your hair short, you can play with color more than anybody else because it gives you the option of letting it grow out, cut it off, clean slate, bam, bang, boom. You know, you're back, back, I'm back. So I already told y'all in my first video, but in case you forgot, I do. I, I previously was getting my hair dyed every two years. By the time two years was up, it was all out and I could go on for something else. But now I think I want to get my hair dyed a little bit more often, so I'll probably get it done twice a year. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, please leave them down below. I'm happy to answer any questions you have related to color in this video or future videos. I take requests. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.